And your topic is? Hello, clean architecture. He claims. Just kidding. <laughs> Have a good time. Thank you. Okay, so I have a first question to you guys, and uh, please raise your hands. Have you ever joined a legacy project? So no Greenfield, only a legacy project. Okay, okay. And uh, do you know this metric of quote quality? <laughs> so yes. our task as programmers uh, is to provide a good quality of our solutions. And the code grows and we might find multiple challenges of big code bases. And one of the most important one that I have already learned by myself is that big code bases are really hard to maintain. They might be really costly because they are also fragile. So we are changing one thing and something breaks and we don't even know what breaked. And actually the solution is the architecture. And I'm Jakub Pavlak, and I would like to introduce you to a clean architecture approach. Some, like, really short story about me. In my previous life, I was pro saxophone player, and I really mean it. I'm pro saxophone player, and I'm also a co-founder of Painful Field. It's near Warsaw, so you're more than, more than welcome there. And I'm Angular front-end developer, and I have joined BEC in fall of 2022. And my task is to help other teams with a monorepo setup. But we had two main goals. And the first goal is to make micro frontends from the existing code base. So we are, we, have, we are having the legacy project, and we are separating and cutting this into micro frontends. And the second goal is to provide a solution for other teams to use. So we are producing libraries that are platform agnostic because our frontends, our micro frontends, are used in web and native mobile application. And I really mean it. It's not a hybrid. It's really native mobile application. So after a while, uh, fast forward, we have done a really huge refactor. And it wasn't that bad, maybe some problems in production, I don't know. Uh, so now we have clear boundaries between our, between our uh, systems and our teams. Of course, we are still getting into that. And some teams already switched to micro frontends entirely. So they are already ready. And the micro frontends are really platform agnostic. So they are not aware of the platform they are seen on. So the first goal, the first goal was to provide the existing solution as a micro frontend. And let me start with, with this differentiation. So you might be already familiar with classes. So it's, it contains data structures and some methods, some functionalities. And then we have modules that are combining classes and then we have components. And it's not a component like Angular or React component. It's more like an architectural component. So then components are forming the entire system. And the problem is that we would probably fail achieving the first goal if we would go straight into this direction because our system looked like that. So we had really coupled system with a lot of circular dependencies and it was really messy. So we just thought as, as it is a single giga component. So there was only one single component of the entire system. So, okay, let's pack this into micro frontends and we will have something like that. So we, will, we would probably multiply the system into micro frontends and we would have a lot of bundles and duplications inside the code. And how to solve this type of problems with circular dependency? We, like we interrogated the, the entire system, the entire repo, and we figured out there are two kinds of problems we are having inside our code. So the first one is that feature 
is dependent on the shell. So something is imported. So the shell, the application is importing the feature, and then the feature is importing the shell. So you have here the circular dependency. And the other type is that feature A was dependent on feature B and back. So we have circular dependency over here. And to solve circular dependency, we can use the letter D from solid. So dependency inversion principle. Are you familiar with the, this approach? Please raise your hands. Okay, so we have here the dependency that is going into authorizer, and then we would like to inverse the direction. So we would have to introduce the interface here, so some abstraction, and then the authorizer component is implementing this, in, this interface. So the direction here is backwards. So what to do with this? There is a common closure principle. So we have this problem first, so circular dependency, and we moved some functionalities, some interfaces into our feature B. So here you can see that shell is dependent on the feature A, but it also implements some of the functionalities. So the common closure principle is like packing more stuff into one component, but it should be really highly related to each other. So there is one actor, one point of change for the component. And the second problem, the second type of problem, so circular dependency between features, and we solve this otherwise. So we solve this using common reuse principle. So this is introducing the feature, the next feature, that are combining functionalities that are shared across different features. And this is called common reuse principle. And it's really crucial to think about the dependencies inside this component. So all classes inside should be really inseparable. So if you are using one class from the component, we are also dependent on the others. And we are happily making more and more components, but what is stable or unstable? Because there are some components that are changing really often and others are just static. There is no changes like 2018, the last commit. And there is a stability and instability concept. And here you can see that there is an underscore, there's an NPM library, and uh, the second one is ng forms. And you can see that the first one is maximal stable because it has more dependence than dependencies. And here's the formula to calculate the value, the metric, real, actual metric of stability, or to be more precise, instability of the component. And here we can have the next principle defined in the clear clean architecture, the stable dependencies. And it simply says, always direct your dependencies, dependencies into more stable components. And it's really important to keep thinking about this. And what is stable in our projects? And nothing is not the answer. Uh, like abstraction, this is the most stable part of our systems. So some descriptions of functionalities, but no implementation. And here we jump into the next principle, the stable abstractions principle. And it says that our building blocks, our Lego bricks for, the, for our systems should be maximal stable, but they should be also as stable as they abstract. So if we have more abstractions in our, in our components, then we should have also more stable components. And here you can see just a simple example of weather forecast application. And here's the abstraction. So show me the weather. But it's not saying how we are at retrieving the information. It's just a business rule that is showing the weather. That's it. And that's the abstraction. That's the business abstraction. And yeah, we finally achieved the goal. So we have really clear boundaries between teams, so team and B, and we have also uh, achieved the boundaries, the dependency rule. So the boundaries are crossed only in a single direction. So we have a really, really clear situation here. And there is also another principle that 
we didn't use yet. It's called reuse release equivalence principle, and you might think about it as an NPM library. So it's all related to release cycles of libraries. So it's also important to keep uh, thinking and remember about that. And also remember that such work is not a one step task. It's more like a process. It's kind of way of thinking about our code. The next goal. So platform agnostic one. And here we are entering the clean architecture approach in front end world. So the most basic, basic thing in clean architecture and the core of the approach, the architecture, is entities. And ent entities are business rules, but they would exist even if there is no code. So these are business rules without implementation, without anything related to code. So no exceptions, no errors, just pure business rules. And here we can see that we have some, something called approval provider, and there is just a description of functionality, and that's it. So let's jump into higher level, so the next layer, and this is use cases. And use cases are more like application-related rel business rules. And here we are entering something related more to code. So we have some verification, some data validation that is not existing in business world, but it's related to the application, the code itself. And then use cases are also using entities. So they are like integrating and orchestrating entities. And the next layer, it's interface adapters layer. And uh, yeah, it's not really clean architecture way because we should have here controllers, presenters, views, models, etc. but no views at all, no relation to our front-end framework. And yeah, you have to always balance the, the solution to your problem and to your budget. So you have to also balance things. And then we can see that it's kind of orchestrating the use cases. So we have transfer money, and then we are preparing model, some, some data structure, and then we are passing this into our approval use case. So this interface adapter, adapter layer is orchestrating use cases. And then here is the implementation of our platform. So the frameworks and the drivers layer. And this is the layer that is changing most frequently. But you might, you might already notice that there is no usage in, the, in below layers. So entities, use cases, and data adapters have, has no knowledge about frameworks and about specific implementation. They are just using use cases and entities. So here, there is a web approval provider and it implements our abstract approval provider. And how to combine all these things? And this is called main component. So this is like our module and we are just combining and orchestrating, gluing all stuff together. So here we can see that there is like variable for approval provider and then there is some condition just checking what platform is it. And then it's providing the proper implementation. And use case and components are not aware of specific, specific implementation because they are just accepting our type. So this is also TypeScript, as you may see. And it's really important to have this such, this such of types. And yeah, goal was achieved. So we have now horizontal layers, we have different layers of abstractions, and the code is platform agnostic, and the most important thing is that business rules, if you jump into use cases and entities, are really clear, because you are reading like, like a description of functionality. And then the core is also really easy to test, because there is no HTML testing, you are just testing use cases and entities, and how are they interacting with each other. And the question arises, is clean architecture good for your next project and you should jump right into the book and implement all things? And it depends on the context. So 
you have to always balance and find the best solution for your problem. Because you might create really simple solution like CRUD or MVC or any pattern, and it might be really overkill to use such a complicated architecture because we simplify this already. Because if you read the book, it's much more complicated than that. So you have to always balance the best solution for your given problem. And if your business owner says you that you have no time to architecture, it's like loss of money. So try bad architecture. And I can assure you that maintenance of no architecture is really, I would say, hard. And if you are interested in architectures, there are also similar concepts like hexagonal architecture or domain-driven design or layered architecture. And I think you'll find this out on yourselves. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm ahead of time, yeah. So, any questions? I don't see any hands raised. Okay. There is one here. Okay, you, you surprised me because you were so on time. I mean, Practice. This, this, I, if you're here for the first time, this doesn't happen all the time. Okay. <laughs> Normally, it's like these little delicate dings in the background, these noises we have to make. Uh, to get people to make their information concise and effective, and that was extremely well done. Uh, Jakub, first question again over here. Hi, uh, how did you convince like business in order like to shift the approach like to development? Because like that seems sounds like a payoff of like a huge technical debt and like a change of approach that takes time. And how did the conversation look like when you like provided the estimates that? Okay, so your question is about discussions with business. The most simple answer for this is good manager. And actually, all these talks was, uh, was provided by our manager. And then we are also responsible for the core, for the heart of our system. Because uh, the entire organization is really... Uh, into micro frontends because we have a lot of problems. So they are also uh, counting the time you are spending on merge conflicts and then with releasing uh, one single staff from one single team. And then the entire organization is releasing entire system. So this is why we are going into micro frontends direction. And of course, it's a process. It's really uh, hard to achieve that. But uh, if you can convince business and you can show the metrics about release cycles of a single like comma inside your team and you have multiple teams, yeah, so they know the money. So the money language talks, I would say. Wow, that's always those are difficult questions when it comes to money, business, and uh, creation, the things that you want to innovate. Next question, hold on. Um, I have a question. Do you know any uh, open source projects or or some sources, some you know bigger uh, projects that follow this approach uh, that you presented? And so this guess, is you know I can just go and okay learn from it. <laughs> okay, so I was doing research and that was really uh, interesting for me because there are a lot of Android projects out there that implements clean architecture, and there are no front end related stuff. And I was working on my own on, on some simple project, and I will probably update it on Twitter, uh, but I don't know still yet because it's like family project with really bizarre logic inside, but it implements entire clean architecture. It's, and it's, uh, there is a lot of like overkill. There is a lot of different parts, and it might get really complicated to understand even. So I didn't find any any example of front-end solution that implements the way that I saw the, the entire solution inside the book. So I would say Android is the answer because there are a lot of information about it. 
Second question. Okay. We have also follow up, follow up. one here. Ah, sorry. But the Android, you mean uh, some Kotlin, right? Or Yes, uh, really, so I not, didn't not care what, what was that. I just uh, read some documentation, some articles, and then code was, it was maybe Java, maybe Kotlin. I do, really don't know because the, the articles out there are also really old ones because the, the, the approach is also old. So you might find some documentation from around 2010, something like that. So there is not much information about this. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say, by the way, I loved your imagery at the beginning. I love the Lego uh, analogy, uh, and the visualization for me was perfect. Uh, from, I'm glad. From my naive point of view, when I look, I think about computer, uh, rather software development, I see this type of architecture, like these buildings, in the same way that I imagine. And it also corresponds to BC because it's Denmark. You see. So, so I thought that was really brilliant. I really appreciated that. Any more questions for Jakub? We had one. There, there we go. Yeah, so uh, legacy code often, often comes uh, with... Yeah, so legacy code often comes together with a legacy team or legacy teams. <laughs> so, yeah. So this question is about like... One question that was very good was the business part, right? But the other thing when you're an architect is that you really have to, uh, you know, get the people on with it. And now you are talking about like dependency injections, uh, restructuring the code, So you have to get those people up to speed. Uh, how would you compare, you know, the uh, uh, challenge that you had or, or uh, whatever you would say with the business thing to get those other people or were those just, you know, okay. running? So our teams, I think they are really eager to learn. And uh, for other teams, we have also another conventions and another solutions because uh, this architecture, this clean architecture, is really related to the things that uh, we as a really core team, the, like we are def defining the platform and we are using this approach because we are also uh, providing just abstractions for other teams. So they are, they are not even aware of the implementation out there. So we are just skipping the implementation. We are doing this outside. But as, uh, as for other teams' approaches, I would say clean architecture isn't the best approach to develop business features. And uh, we are in the process of defining documentations and guidelines and conventions around, and we are in discussions with all other teams. So all teams are involved, and we are also following some tutorials about uh, DDD in Angular because there is uh, one of uh, the most known one. And like there is another approach for business features, another approach for platform related. So it depends on the eagerness of other teams to learn. I would say. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I have a question about, you mentioned monorepos, uh, monorepo, and uh, I assume that you are using monorepo for separating all those components and, uh, and uh, micro front ends. Uh, so the question is, which uh, tool you used for, uh, for managing monorepo? It's Lerna or NX or what, what you are using for? Basically, NX and Lerna are close together right now, but we are using NX. We are uh, using the, the approach from the NX, so no package base, uh, because the project was really one component. So this is why we have also uh, ended up having circular dependencies, and this is really a dangerous zone for monorepos because the code grows, and we have also a lot of boilerplate all out there, and if you skip the approach of NX monorepo, you are really in a bad place and you don't want to get there. It sounds like a really good question to me. Uh, amazing. Any other questions for Jakub before we let him go? By the way, you'll have a chance to speak with him hopefully later when we're yes, interacting. Uh, what we plan to do right now, uh, folks, is to take a short break. About 15 minutes, can I say 15 and everyone understands 15 Piednasche? <laughs> okay, and we'll see you back in 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Yakub. <laughs>